and a matter of duty for our government, we must deal with the here and now and assure affordable fuel for America by increasing domestic production. There is no way that allowing offshore drilling would lower gas prices right now. At best, you're looking at five years or more down the road. There's a little bit from Senator John McCain and Barack Obama, very different views on what we should be doing with the price of oil right now and the lack of domestic oil that we are producing. Senator McCain is saying, let's pull the moratorium on off coast drilling, let the states decide. Barack Obama saying, no, 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 no drilling, no nuclear plants, no coal plants, no nothing, except, you know, battery-powered cars, which is great, but I think we need some more oil. Well, I'm bringing in Patrick Kerr, oil trader with American Futures Trading, to get a little bit more insight on exactly how the price of oil gets set, what happens in the futures market, what happens with speculation. Patrick, how are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I appreciate your time. You know, sure. we're, we're hearing all the time that a lot of the price of oil is due to speculation and oil futures trading. Uh, how much of the price do you think is, is because of that? Um, actually, I think very little of the prices, and mainly because um, it's, it's really become a supply and demand story in the market right now. We have uh, the world produces 85 million uh, barrels of crude a day, and we use 86.5 to, to 87 uh, million per day. Uh, so the 85 is not covering the 86 plus. And uh, that's coming out of inventories that's driving the price up. You know, I saw T Boone Pickens say that uh, T Boone Pickens from Texas not too long ago. But but I also have seen people say, wait a second, we've we've actually got plenty of oil. It's just that we're not uh, refining it, refining it. Excuse me, at the exact right places. Maybe we're not able to get it to where it needs to go. Uh, there's a lot of nervousness about what's going on in the Middle East. But we've actually got more oil in the system now than we did last year. You don't agree with that? No, I, I, I don't. I mean, and, uh, you know, if someone has the evidence to, to show that, I'll take a look at it. But I think, um, you know, the, the, the demand right now is exceeding the supply. And um, a lot of it has to do, it's a, it's a global market now. If the demand and, uh, is exceeding the supply, though, why aren't we having shortages? There, there are shortages uh, uh, across the world. There's been uh, uh, major shortages in Africa. There's been um, major shortages in rationing in China. Um, so we're so just yeah. not seeing it because we're willing to pay. Yeah, we're, pay we're paying up. Um, the other factor is a lot of the, uh, the, the global side of the business is becoming, uh, it, it's shifted to uh, a national um, game as opposed to a corporate game. So, you know, our, our corporations like Exxon and all that, we're, we're competing against countries. And, You're talking uh, about countries that have nationalized oil programs, yeah, nationalized Brazil oil and programs Venezuela and, and Cuba and things yeah. like that. Well, let me ask you, before we get too far afield, I, I brought you on because of your work in American futures trading, because that whole idea of futures trading, I don't think a lot of us understand it. Explain how the futures market works as, as, as if we're three years old. Okay, well, um, basically it's, it's just a market to buy and sell um, oil contracts at a given price, and the markets trade um, throughout the day. Actually, uh, about 23 hours a day they, they trade now. And there's buyers and sellers. So it's a global market, so there's people, um, you know, in there buying and selling. Um, a lot of people uh, will use the market for hedging, like producers or end users. Um, so slow down. So in other words, if I know I use a lot of oil, let's say I'm a big trucking company or I'm an airline, and I, I want to try and hedge against oil going way up, I can say, I'm going to buy an oil contract, and I'm going to buy my oil from you right now at $138 a barrel because I'm afraid six months from now it'll be 150 and I'll save money if oil goes up. Uh, is that's that what correct. you mean? That is correct. You can buy, um, you know, if you go out to, to December right now, you can buy crude oil for 137 bucks. And so, if so think, if it goes up over that, by, and December rolls around and it's really 145, I still only have to pay 137. That's correct. So that for me could save me a lot of money. That that can end up saving you a lot of money. Um, it also prices in um, certainty into your business and your business model. Right. Um, and of course, the risk is uh, if if next December 
all of a sudden there's more energy on the market, it could drop down to $130, $120 a barrel. I still have to pay the 137 Right. You would lose the difference between uh, what you paid for it and and uh, where you ended up selling it or, or took delivery on it. And so that's really what we'll, what's supposed to guide how high up these oil futures can go because the people buying these oil futures want to make sure that they don't take a bath, have oil go down, and they're still stuck paying these huge rates. So they're very careful how high they bid this price up, right? Well, right. There, well, there's there's both sides to hedging. There's there's people that are locking in prices because they think that they're high and they want to lock in those high prices, and there's also people that uh, are afraid those prices are going to go up and they want to have some stability in their business model and lock in those prices as well. As well, so uh, you'll get hedgers looking for for price movements both ways. Gotcha. Um, as well as speculators taking the other sides of those trades. Well, let me get into that part. Patrick Kerr, oil trader with American Futures Trading here in the Greg Knapp Experience. Tell me about the speculators. What do they do, and uh, how much are they driving up the price right now? Well, they they are trying to make money on the movement of the price of uh, oil, and um, basically, uh, I you know I've looked into it quite a bit. You know, it's part of my business, but I I, I just don't see that the speculators are. Uh, they're in the market, but I don't see that they're uh, uh, manipulating it in any way. That uh, how could they? What would they do to if, if if you could you know lay out a way that a speculator could manipulate the market to make the price of oil go up? What would they have to do? Well, they would you know like all the all of the Hunt brothers in the seventies with the silver. They tried to corner the silver market, and the market went way up, and then it then it crashed because it, it ultimately didn't work. Um, but explain is, why that would happen. As you try to corner the market, what pushes the price up? The what they're doing is they're hoarding silver. Uh, the Hunt brothers would be hoarding. Uh, uh, my understanding of which it. would decrease the <laughs> which would decrease the supply. Yeah, it would right? decrease the, the, the supply and uh, put the prices up. And what they were doing is um, my understanding of it is they were taking it off the market and put, warehousing it and all that. Right now with crude oil, you don't have that happening because our uh, inventories are going down. We don't have stockpiling in crude oil. Uh, the inventories have actually been coming down. Um, and if you look at the speculators, the, the CFTC, which is the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, right. they release um, the reporting of positions each week of speculators, hedgers, uh, and both large and small speculators. And, uh, you know, I check it every week. It comes out Friday afternoon, and I don't see anything unusual or strange. In fact, everything looks pretty pretty much even in there. Um, um, but it's easy for anyone to check and see for themselves that, uh, you know, it doesn't look like there's any funny business there at all. I mean, a speculator is trying to make money in a market, and they can get it right or they can get it wrong. Okay, let me ask you this, because uh, Barack Obama is saying if we start drilling off the coast, if we start drilling in Anwar, if we start going for our oil shell, if we uncap a lot of the wells that we capped when we couldn't make money at it, if we announce all that tomorrow and we pass the law, wouldn't that impact the futures market? I mean, I know that we're not going to get the oil in tomorrow, but just like how Saudi Arabia announced they're going to start, you know, producing five or putting five hundred thousand more barrels of oil a day on the market, the oil price came down a dollar eighty-eight cents per barrel in one day. Wouldn't wouldn't that start to push down the futures prices for oil, knowing that we're going to get a lot of oil online eventually? Well, news the way news items reflect in the uh, the futures markets. And I guess the uh, spot market as well as a lot of times.